Tonight, breaking news, the Supreme Court says Texas can enforce its own immigration law, arresting and in some cases deporting suspected undocumented migrants for now. Also tonight, the chilling bank robbery, the suspects 11, 12 and 16. And another royal image tonight that appears altered too. this one with the queen. First, the Supreme Court ruling allowing Texas to enforce its own new immigration law for now. The law allowing police to arrest migrants suspected of illegally crossing into the U.S. And it allows Texas judges to remove them from the U.S. regardless of federal law. Terry Moran at the Supreme Court. Tonight, after a horrific racial attack, two former deputies sentenced. Part of a group of white officers accused of torturing two black men, shooting one of them and beating them. Tonight, one of those officers getting 20 years in prison. And what the judge said today while handing down the sentence, the race for president and tonight, Donald Trump saying Jewish Americans who vote for Democrats, quote, hate their religion and should be ashamed of themselves. The White House responding tonight and Trump doubling down on his comments. Rachel Scott reporting. One of Donald Trump's former aides, Peter Navarro, sent to prison today despite trying to appeal it all the way to the Supreme Court. 24 hours after President Biden urged Benjamin Netanyahu against the offensive in southern Gaza into Rafa, what Netanyahu is now saying tonight, back up in, in Israel. The crisis in Haiti, our team is there. The U.S. State Department warning Americans in Haiti to be ready for possible chopper evacuations, to be ready to get to the U.S. Embassy if needed. Our Matt Rivers tonight showing us the scene, though, at the U.S. Embassy. Back in the U.S. tonight, that alarming bank robbery, the FBI arresting three suspects, just 11, 12, and 16. The new royal image tonight making news already, now a second one reportedly altered, this one with the queen. What's been spotted and what's going on here amid questions about Princess Catherine and that new video showing her out with Prince William. And longtime ESPN anchor Hannah Storm with our Robin Roberts tonight, revealing her battle with breast cancer, how she learned, no family history, what doctors discovered, and her message tonight with three daughters of her own. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night. We begin tonight with this new ruling from the Supreme Court allowing Texas to take action on its own when it comes to illegal immigration, allowing Texas to arrest people suspected of crossing into the U.S. illegally, and in some cases, allowing Texas to deport them. It comes after a major clash between the Biden administration and Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Late today, the Supreme Court, in a 6-3 ruling, the six conservative-leaning justices ruling in favor of the Texas governor, the court lifting the stay, the hold on that state's controversial new immigration law for now. The Biden administration calling the law unconstitutional and a clear violation of federal authority. So what does this mean, the immediate change on the ground in Texas? ABC's Terry Moran, who has covered the Supreme Court for years, leading us off from the court tonight. Tonight, authorities in Texas can now on their own arrest people who they suspect are migrants here illegally, regardless of federal law, and even send them to Mexico. The Supreme Court's conservative majority granting Texas that green light for now to enforce its controversial immigration law. In a 6-3 to three order, the high court rejected a request by the Biden administration to intervene and place the law, SB4 as it's called, on hold while it is challenged in the lower courts. The Biden administration argues the Texas law is an infringement on the federal government's exclusive authority over immigration law, a power grounded in the Constitution and affirmed by the Supreme Court. Tonight, Texas Governor Greg Abbott called the court's order a, quote, clearly positive development. But in a concurring opinion, conservative justices Amy Coney Barrett and Brett Kavanaugh made clear that this is not the last word. They want the lower appeals court to render its judgment first on SB4, and then the Supreme Court can review that. But in a scathing dissent joined by Justice Ketanji Brown-Jackson, Justice Sonia Sotomayor warned that the court's order invites further chaos and crisis in immigration enforcement. Sotomayor adding, this law will disrupt sensitive foreign relations, frustrate the protection of individuals fleeing persecution, and deter non-citizens from reporting abuse or trafficking. The ruling comes as federal migrant apprehensions across the southwest border reached an average of 4,200 daily, a sharp decline from the peak of nearly 11,000 in a single day back in December. 
So now this case comes, goes back to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit with a nudge from some of the justices to move quickly. And that could mean this Texas law could be back before the Supreme Court soon, perhaps within days. Still, the White House tonight is saying that the court's order today will, quote, sow chaos and confusion at the border. David? But not over yet, as you point out. Terry Moran leading us off tonight. Terry, thank you. We turn now to that chilling case that made national headlines, a horrific racial attack in Mississippi. Tonight, two former deputies sentenced, part of a group of white officers accused of torturing two black men, shooting one of them and beating them. Tonight, one of those officers getting 20 years in prison today, the judge calling the crimes, quote, egregious and despicable. Here's ABC's Faith Abube. Tonight, two former Mississippi Sheriff's deputies sentenced for their role in the brutal and racially motivated torture of two black men. Deputy Hunter Elward getting 20 years. Lieutenant Jeffrey Middleton sentenced to 17 and a half years. They are two of six officers who have pleaded guilty to federal felony charges. According to court documents, the officers part of a group nicknamed the Goon Squad because of their willingness to use excessive force and not report it. This goon squad has been operating without supervision. In January of last year, the goon squad bursting into this home without a warrant after a white neighbor reported several black males for suspicious behavior. Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker placed under arrest in their own home without any evidence of a crime. Prosecutors say the officers then repeatedly tased the two men, calling them racial slurs, beating them, and even sexually assaulting them over the course of 90 minutes. Deputy Elward shooting Jenkins in the mouth, execution style, nearly killing him. And as he lay there bleeding, investigators say the six officers conspired to cover up their actions, even planting drugs and a gun. Can you imagine the abject terror those two victims must have felt. Today, Elward apologizing to the victims. I feel like you get exactly what you did. Eddie Parker saying he still suffers. What's done uh, already, man, can't be erased, man, can't be taken back. Uh, I relive this every day. And David, the rest of the officers will be sentenced tomorrow and on Thursday. All six are facing additional sentencing on state charges at a later date. David. Faith Abube reporting tonight. Faith, thank you. We turn now to the race for the White House and tonight Donald Trump saying Jewish Americans who vote for Democrats, quote, hate their religion and should be ashamed of themselves. The White House responding tonight and Trump doubling down on what he said. Here's Rachel Scott. Tonight, Donald Trump under fire from some of the nation's top Jewish leaders after saying that any Jewish person who votes for Democrats hates their religion. Any Jewish person that votes for Democrats uh, hates their religion, they hate everything about Israel, and they should be ashamed of themselves because Israel will be destroyed. Today, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, the nation's top Jewish elected official, denouncing Trump's comments as reprehensible and dangerous. To say you hate Israel or your religion because you have one political view over the other is sick, it's hateful. It is unadulterated anti-Semitism. Second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, who was also Jewish, outraged. This is a disgusting, <clears throat> toxic, anti-Semitic thing to say by anyone, let alone a former president of the United States. The Anti-Defamation League calling Trump's comments defamatory and patently false. And a White House spokesperson saying there is no justification for spreading toxic, false stereotypes that threaten fellow citizens. None. Late today, Trump doubling down. I think that the Democrats have been very, very opposed to Jewish people. President Biden himself today traveling to Nevada to court another key group of voters, Latinos. Biden making sure Latino voters are well aware of Trump's comments attacking migrants for, quote, poisoning the blood of America. It is a very sad thing for our country. Uh, it's poisoning the blood of our country. The president firing back in an interview with Univision. He said immigrants are poisoning the blood of this country. And this guy despises Latinos. President Biden visiting both Nevada and Arizona today. He relied heavily on the Latino vote to win those states back in 2020, but polls have shown that his support among that critical group is slipping. The Biden campaign launching a national program to try to mobilize Latino voters ahead of November. David. Rachel Scott covering the race for president. Rachel, thank you. Meanwhile, tonight, one of Donald Trump's former aides, Peter Navarro, now in prison tonight, despite his appeal all the way to the Supreme Court. Here's Jonathan Carl. 
Tonight, former White House advisor Peter Navarro became the first senior Trump administration official to go to prison. You gotta stop meeting like this. Convicted of contempt of Congress for refusing to cooperate with the January 6th committee. This is the partisan weaponization of our judicial system. He'll be spending up to four months in a low security prison in Florida, where most of the inmates are elderly men convicted of white collar crimes. He'll be required to do a job of some sort, likely low-level maintenance. I think it's a shame. I think it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to our nation what they did to him. This comes as Trump is calling for the prosecution of his political enemies, including former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who led the January 6th committee. He says Cheney, quote, should go to jail. Please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated January 6th hostages. And at Trump rallies, he stands to salute the national anthem sung by inmates in prison for what they did on January 6th. Trump calls those people who attacked the Capitol patriots, suggesting he'll pardon them on his first day in office. Over the past couple of years, many Republican leaders have sought to minimize or even forget about what happened on January 6th, but not Donald Trump. As he embraces those who attacked the Capitol, he is increasingly putting January 6th at the center of his 2024 campaign. David. John Carl again tonight. Thank you, John. On Capitol Hill today, two former top military commanders were grilled before House lawmakers over the deadly U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. 13 U.S. service members and 170 Afghan civilians were killed in a suicide bomb attack at the airport in Kabul. That was back in August of 2021. Former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Milley and retired General Kenneth McKenzie placed blame on the State Department for waiting too long to order evacuations. Milley acknowledging he doesn't know the exact number of Americans or Afghans who helped the U.S. trying to escape the Taliban who were left behind. Tonight, 24 hours after that phone call between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Biden warning Netanyahu against the offensive in southern Gaza into Rafah. What Netanyahu is now saying tonight... ABC's back up and from Israel. Tonight, just hours after that phone call between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, during which Biden warned Netanyahu a ground invasion in Rafah would be a mistake, the Israeli leader doubling down, telling lawmakers here in Israel there's no alternative. His defiant comments coming after that blunt warning from Biden, the two speaking for the first time in over a month. Yesterday, Netanyahu agreeing to hold off on a ground operation until consulting with U.S. officials in Washington about an alternative approach aimed at protecting civilians. Overnight, these aid trucks rolling into northern Gaza, where the U.N. says famine may have already begun. The Israeli government, and I met with a very senior person today, they insist there is no starvation in Gaza. We are seeing vulnerable people suffering every single day. We're seeing a trickle of aid when we need a tsunami of food assistance. David, Israel believes about five Hamas battalions plus Hamas's leader are holed up in Rafah, which is one reason a senior Israeli official tells me tonight there is no world in which Israel does not go ahead with this offensive despite what the president says. David. Matt Gutman in Tel Aviv for us. Thank you, Matt. In Haiti tonight, the U.S. State Department is now warning Americans in that country to be ready for possible evacuations, to be ready to get to the U.S. Embassy. But our Matt Rivers on the ground there showing us what that journey might be like, the situation just outside the U.S. Embassy tonight. Tonight, with Haiti spiraling deeper into chaos, the State Department sending a letter to Americans here in Haiti, telling them to be ready for possible helicopter evacuations from the embassy in Port-au-Prince. But today, we saw firsthand just how dangerous even getting to that embassy can be. That building right there is the U.S. Embassy in Port-au-Prince, and there has been gang fighting across this entire area. But if you come with me this way, you see that gas station just down the road there? That's how close the gangs have managed to get. The distance between that point and the embassy, no more than a quarter mile. This chaos forcing thousands from their homes. This makeshift shelter here just a few weeks ago was a government building. We walk in and see them, families sleeping on the floor. Marie Lina Leon and her 11-year-old son, Fabienne, desperate for food. How difficult has this been for you and for your son? It's very difficult to feed him, Marie Lina tells me. People here are dying one death, hunger. 
David, Americans being told they'll be given just one day's notice prior to any potential flight out and that they'll have to make it to the embassy at their own risk. David? All right, Matt Rivers in Haiti for us again tonight. Matt, thank you. We turn now to London tonight where yet another royal image is making news. Another photo reportedly altered, this one with the Queen. What's been spotted in that image? And, of course, the bigger question here, what's going on? ABC's Maggie Ruley in London tonight. Tonight, Kensington Palace and the Princess of Wales under fire again, accused of doctoring family photos. Now this photo, the palace says, was taken by the princess in 2022 under scrutiny. Getty images suggesting it could be digitally enhanced. It adds to the narrative that people feel that they can't be trusted and that they're concerned about what they can believe. Getty reviewing images provided by the palace after Kate apologized for manipulating this photo, only adding to the speculation about her well-being. Though this footage, obtained by TMZ, appears to show Kate and her husband, Prince William, grocery shopping near their home in Windsor Saturday. Photography experts interviewed by ABC News pointing out clear signs of editing in this family portrait featuring the late queen. Look at the queen's skirt here. The pattern does not line up. Same with the couch. The stitching doesn't match. And these blurry outlines of Prince Louis' left ear and chin suggesting his face could have been lifted from another photo. And David, one photo expert told us it's possible that photo is a composite. And now Getty's going back and reviewing all images provided to them by the palace. David. All right, Maggie Ruley in London. This isn't going away. Maggie, thank you. When we come back here, the chilling bank robbery here in the U.S., the three suspects, just 11, 12, and 16. Also, news tonight about intermittent fasting and your heart. And longtime ESPN anchor Hannah Storm, diagnosed with breast cancer, no family history, telling our Robin Roberts how it was found and her message tonight. Tonight, the FBI in Houston has arrested three bank robbery suspects, just 11, 12, and 16. Authorities say they robbed a Wells Fargo bank last week while brandishing a weapon. They went to the teller demanding money. One official saying they are the youngest robbery suspects he's ever seen. When we come back here tonight, the news on intermittent fasting and your heart and ESPN's Hannah Storm and her breast cancer diagnosis tonight, what she told our Robin Roberts. To the index tonight, a new research finding intermittent fasting may pose risks to your heart, the practice where people eat within an eight-hour window or less. Researchers finding it poses a significant risk of dying from cardiovascular disease. The findings set to be presented at an American Heart Association conference. Experts say more study will be coming on this. Tonight, the lottery jackpot's growing. Mega millions surging to $893 million now ahead of tonight's drawing. No Powerball winner last night. That jackpot now $687 million for tomorrow night. Good luck. When we come back here tonight, longtime ESPN anchor Hannah Storm with our Robin Roberts and her very personal reveal tonight. Funny tonight here, longtime ESPN anchor Hannah Storm, you know her from Sports Center, sitting down with our Robin Roberts, revealing her breast cancer diagnosis and her message with three daughters of her own. The doctor said, I'm so surprised, but you have ductal carcinoma in situ. You have DCIS, the earliest form of breast cancer. And I was like, DCIS? I've never heard of this in my life. How did you that's handle the, that? That's, I was shocked because, again, I had had mammograms every year. I have no risk factors. I have no breast cancer mm -hmm. in my family. I did not have a lump. I did not have pain. I don't have any genetic predisposition to breast cancer. I, I got to say, I was shocked. I was scared. And how are you today? I'm good. Really good. Really, really good. I'm very, very, very lucky because they found it so early. What I had is a lumpectomy. The surgery was successful. I was able to go back to work, cover the Super Bowl. I'm also taking a drug called tamoxifen. tamoxifen. I'm taking this for the next three years. And now you've decided to let women know the importance of getting those screenings. The more that you talk about it, and I think just demystify it, and exactly. it's okay to talk about, it's okay to share, mm -hmm. you know, at whenever you're ready. And That's okay. And you have three daughters. And I have three oh, daughters, yeah. and that makes it even more important, it right? Does. Because you want to think about your family. There they are. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think about having daughters and the importance of mm -hmm. them understanding, advocating for their health, and what you can do. You can find out, and you need to find out. And don't be afraid to have a mammogram. Be afraid not to. Mm. Be afraid of what you don't 
no. Yeah, not right? what you can't find out. Yeah. Hannah, it You're is so best. wonderful to see you. You're the best. So Make you. your mess your message, right? <laughs> I mean, thank you for sharing it. that. You're yes. doing it. You're doing it. Always pulling for Hannah. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.